in the world of multiband, if you if you want to, one of the interesting things about multiband, Andrew Sheps will tell you this, is it's very hard to use a multiband in parallel because you tend to, because it's got three bands, it just there's a lot of delay compensation that goes on and it doesn't tend to add up when you try to use it as a parallel compressor. Yep, this absolutely. guy actually works in parallel. Uh -huh. which is really nice. Although it also has parallel processing, you know, blending built into it. Mm -hmm. But what I found with this is if you've ever experienced that tube tech multiband yep. compressor, this it's is sort of that style of really kind of like smooth, smooth, gentle contouring of shapes. So mm -hmm. if you if you uh, if you want to um, use it on percussion and you want to just really get your low end a little bit more under control, you could just hit a little bit more compression on that. It's got really wide cross um, uh, frequency crossovers so mm -hmm. that it's, it's very phase linear mm -hmm. and it's just a fantastic sounding unit. It's one of those things, you know, like a lot of plugins sound better the minute you plug them in because they're just louder, you know? Yep. And this guy is that. And and uh, so it, it takes a lot for me to get past the fact that it just sounds great the minute I instigate it and actually get into tweaking it. Right. But I do love it. Um, yeah, that that, um, that tube tech hardware unit is fabulous. Yeah, uh, that is a fabulous. I actually owned one for a long time. Okay. And, uh, and would use it on my stereo bus. I didn't realize that uh, somebody made a software version of that like this. It's great. Well, it's That's... not exactly that, but it's sort of based on the same topology as that. So <laughs> if you like that unit, you'll you'll like this. It's sort of that that's the thing you could get like actually this kind of works as a like when you're if you put it on your mix and your high end is getting a little bit edgy and stuff you want to control that high end a little bit you can mm -hmm. just tap the compressor on the high end a little bit and mm -hmm. then just blend back and you sort of do that which is i wanted to mention about the decapitator one of the simple subtle uses for it is um if you use the tone control and just back it off at 12 o'clock towards 11 o'clock yeah it's a fantastic smoother it's it amazing. just takes anything that's harsh and de-harshifies it a little bit. And believe yeah. it or not, I end up using that on orchestras and strings a lot huh. without using, without adding any uh, distortion or any sort of harmonic content. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when it gets a little harsh, there's a lot of tools now, but that's sort of one of my old standbys for just mm -hmm. taking down a little bit of that harshness. Huh, I'll try that. You know what I use? I use the, Studer, the UAD Studer 800. Yeah, and now you also have the Soothe, the OEK Sound Soothe, yep. which is brilliant to doing that, and the Gulf yep. Oss is brilliant to doing that. So there's a lot of there's a lot of new tools in the, um, you know, in the bank now. But you know, yep. going back to some of the classic things that I used yep. to use back in the early days of Pro Tools, you know, mm -hmm. the early 2010s. This is, this is very <laughs> interesting. I'm going to check it out. There, there yeah. goes my uh, my discretionary time again. Yeah, sorry about that. This 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 broadcast is basically yeah. There you go. So this guy, if you you see the little circles on the right hand side, they look like two little gears, a small gear and a big gear. Yeah. Just click on it. Uh, wait, Protos is uh, puking. One second. Uh, so so this is this is this. It's a beautiful channel strip that gives you yeah. sort of uh, different colors of input saturation. No, there's a way to click on it where you can. There you go. So so. And then this is a work in progress that they're doing. This has been released. Each mm -hmm. of these has three different versions of the compressor, three different versions of the high pass, low pass, mm -hmm. and three different versions of the EQ. And they're all very beautiful. Some of them are a little bit more drastic than others. Some of them are a little more nevy. Some of them are yeah. a little more politicky. I, I'm not one that really cares what it's modeled after because if I right. sort of go into that mode in my brain, then I, st I stop thinking and I stop listening. Yeah, it's very easy for me to stop listening. This so looks, I um, I did, mess around. Sorry. Yeah, this looks really amazing. What have you been trying it on? Uh, everything. I've been, you know, I'm sort of at that stage with it now. I'm actually mixing a track now, or I used it. You know, now in Pro Tools you get folders, right? So yep. I'm using it on my drum folder. So it's actually across the entire drum mix because I have everything. Wow. Yeah. So it's work. It's working great. Um, and I've tried it on vocals, quite a bit on vocals. I'm just trying, I'm, you know, I'm sort of figuring out where it's going to sit because PSB has another plugin, another EQ that is part of my day-to-day -day work, which is the E27, yep. which is basically based on this Avitas plugin, this yep. Avitas EQ. It's, yep. my, it's one of my favorite EQs, and, and um, I use that quite a bit. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out where I would use that and where I would use this. 
And yeah. I believe that Anthony and Adam, the guy that designed this, are still working on more, you know, uh, you know things to put in here, how to expand upon it. It's sort of their version of their 500 rack. So it's going to be very nice. You know, yeah. I'm, I, I also have to... zero latency. Oh, well, even nicer. Yeah, um, crazy, right? Yeah, this is this is this is awesome. Um, I, I was not aware of this again for the same reason. There's so many plugins and there's not that, you know, everybody thinks I get this a lot. It's like people send me their plugins. Like, oh, you have all these plugins. And um, and the thing is that it takes a long time to test plugins, because if you integrate them in your work to integrate them into your workflow under pressure, um, it's not really you can't really screw up. We don't have the chance to screw up. So right. uh, it's very hard for me to try right. new stuff. Yeah. Well, um, now, because now is one of those times where that opportunity is here because I, I, I the stuff I'm working on now, it's all been postponed. Right. And I, I have the resources. So I'm just mixing. I'm, I'm working on, an, on a fantastic album. I'm actually working on a Boy George song right now. I have another I'm doing a Moby album and um, and none of this is due yet. So it's it's giving me an opportunity to really play with play. sound. That's great. And, That's and, and, awesome. and the beauty is when I get it wrong, I love getting it wrong. You know, I love going down a rabbit hole and going at the end of it going, that sounds like shit. Mm -hmm. Because it's just as it's just as informative to me to get it wrong as it is to get it right a lot of the time. Well, it is it is a demonstrated thing that um that you learn humans learn better from failure than from success. Well, it's not you know, it's the Thomas Edison thing. It, it, it's not really failure, it's just didn't work. There's yes. a difference between failing and not and something not working. So Yes, you know, that is a very um, good way to put it. Right. But there's so many great plugins, these smaller companies. I mean, there's the you know, obviously. Oh, thanks for uh, commenting on the bug mix. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, uh, you know, the Waves has some amazing stuff. All these, you know, the new Apogee plugins are great, but it's great to support these smaller companies. Uh, Good Hertz, that Wolf compressor. It's awesome. Man, oh, man. And I use their pan pot a lot because it, I can pan without, by using delay. I've always used delay to pan, but now I can do it more elegantly, sort of mixing a little bit of delay, a little bit of level, a little bit of spectral panning so that my mm -hmm. panning doesn't feel, you know, mono separated as much as it feels integrated in. You know, for my stuff, what, what really turns me on is that sound staging. You know, it's, it's, a, it's probably why I'm not a great pop mixer. It's, 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 I just love feeling that I'm in, I'm sitting there in the middle of a performance, whether it be an orchestral film score type of performance or a record mm -hmm. where I feel engaged in it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I lose that kind of binaural sensation by having right. a mono sound hard right or hard left, it mm -hmm. takes me out of that sort of kind of fantasy world.